Hey everyone and welcome to day 8 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the rudder. So we've already cut down the stiffeners into the two halves and the shear clips and the ribs. And so those have all been cut apart and they have all been deburred. And now today we are going to be working on the rudder horn, the striker plates, the um, reinforcement plates, and putting them all onto the spar and match drilling everything to each other and to the spar. This was another day though that it was really great to have two people working on it because we were really able to divvy up the work and get stuff done a lot faster. Tyler was able to go and work on putting together the stiffeners and the shear clips and get them aligned just right while I was able to work on the rudder horn and the bottom rib and trying to get those put together. So again, it's it's been really nice having two people, not only for when we're working on some of the larger pieces together, but again, being able to divvy up the work and each of us kind of go and do our own thing and then come together to put it all uh, into the one big piece. So it's just kind of nice to, to be able to do that and to feel comfortable now. We've now, it's day eight, so we're in a lot more of a, have kind of found our groove and what works for us. So that's really nice. It might not look like it's that much actually by the time we're done, but we actually knocked out like two pages of the manual. So that was a lot to get done. It just, you know, it's always a lot of time when you have to go and put everything together and then go through all their drilling, especially when you're trying to get multiple pieces all set up just right. And sometimes you gotta move Clecos around cause they're in the way or whatnot, but, um, it really was a lot, so that was good. And one of the things we're doing today is some countersinking, and I know we've done that before in other videos, but I'm not sure I've actually gone through and explained, for those of you who might not know exactly what that is or what that means or why we're doing it. So I have a little snippet here that I put together to hopefully try and make it make more sense or explain to you what it is that we're doing. Okay, so I've mentioned countersinking a couple times, but I'm not sure I've actually explained what it is. So I'm gonna try and do my best here and hopefully it'll make sense to those of you who don't understand. There are two kinds of rivets that we are working with. I'm gonna try and show you. There are the universal heads, which if you see here, it looks like a little mushroom cap. It's flat on the bottom, so it's, it's flush against a piece of metal and then it's got a little rounded dome on the top. And then we have these countersink rivets, countersunk rivets that have the opposite. It's more like, I guess you'd see with a wood screw where it's beveled in and it's flat on the top. So the top fits flush against whatever uh, skin it's sitting in or metal it's sitting in. And the rivet actually sits down into the piece of metal. And so <clears throat> in order to do that, we either have to dimple the skin or we have to countersink if it's something thicker. So this little bit in here is a countersink cutter and the size is set to fit the different rivets. So like here's a four and here's a three. So it's the right width to fit in there. And then it has exactly the same angle, which I believe is hundred degrees that fits the angle that's here on this countersink rivet. And so the idea is that then you take this uh, countersink micro stop and what you can do is then you can pull down and turn it and you should be able to see here hopefully as I turn it now when you push it all the way you can see a lot of it sticking out but now when I turn it the opposite direction and I push it all the way you'll see it doesn't come out nearly as far and so you're able to set it and what I use is a scrap piece of metal here that we have. I've drilled a bunch of holes, and then what I'll do is hook up the drill and set it up with one of the holes to make sure that I've got it set just right so that the hole that I, the setting I have on the micro stop for the countersink will either be just right so that a countersink rivet will sit either completely flush there with the metal, see you can't even tell where it is, or that it will sit completely flush with a piece of skin that's been dimpled to fit that metal. So you can see here now, you can't see um, any gap in there. Hi, there's my reflection. You can't see any gap in there between the skin and 
the thicker piece of metal that's sitting into. And so that's what I mean by countersinking. We're using the drill with the right countersink cutter for the rivets that we're gonna use, and we set the micro uh, stop for it to the thickness, or to the depth, excuse me, that we need. And then we go and we do that in all the different holes where we're gonna need to have one of these countersink, countersunk rivets sitting in there. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know and I'll try and do a better explanation. All right, hopefully that helped. Those of you who didn't know what countersinking is, for those of you who do, let me know if you think I could have explained it any better. For now, let's get back to working on the rudder. We have now put together all of the different stiffeners with their corresponding shear caps. We have done the work onto the rudder horn and have deburred the spar. And so now it's trying to put the different parts we've worked on before to the spar to do some uh, match drilling there. But it's fun to get to stop and play around a little bit every once in a while. <laughs> That's one of the perks of working together on this. Ty brought out a towel that we had to try and lay the parts on because we'd started to notice that with all the different deburring and drilling we had some little shavings that had accumulated there on the table and it was starting to scratch at the surface of the different pieces that we were working on and so it was just the idea to try it out and we kind of have gone back and forth we used it you're gonna see i think for a while um and i don't know i mean part of it felt like it was just kind of getting hung up on the towel but part of it, it did seem like it was helping to not get this the scratches but then the little shavings will sometimes get caught in the towel and i mean you know it's hit or miss it kind of depends it's really nice having all the little spare wood blocks left over from building the workbench because when we need to prop something up like here where we have a bunch of clecos and the um, shear clips sticking out of the spar it's nice to be able to have those to help prop everything up um, when you're doing the different drilling just make sure that you keep the blocks close enough together that you're not getting any bend in uh, whatever it is that you're drilling because that would mess up your holes. And this was another part here where it's kind of a one person thing at the moment getting these ribs lined up and uh, match filling them so jumping ahead just a little bit we, Tyler went out and got the skins from where we got all the parts stored and pulled those out and then I grabbed the um, soldering iron which I think I've discussed before uh, where you use the soldering iron and a ruler and what you can do is to trace down the edge of the ruler with the soldering iron to help cut the protective vinyl and then you can just strip off the parts that's over the the holes that you're about to drill and deburr and we've found that we like doing this at least on all the exterior parts i know that if we leave it on there for an extended period of time that it can get the uh, the adhesive on the vinyl can get more sticky and become more difficult to remove um, but this was just kind of what we went with and has been our decision so far to try to keep the vinyl on there as long as we can and protect everything at least on the exterior i mean on the interior you're going to need to move it to make sure that you get a nice tight fit when you're clicking everything together and drilling and um you know, you can see they're on the vertical stabilizer in the back. That's just how we've chosen to do it. So it's a nice, easy thing to help protect the skins as much as possible. That wraps things up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the comments below.